In this Torah portion, the word is Vaekaan, and I plead. It starts with in Deut- Deuteronomy ver- uh, chapter 3, 23, and it goes straight to chapter 7, verse 11. Now, before Moses pleads with the Lord, he gives Joshua a command to cross over beyond Jordan because they were still on this side of Jordan. Joshua was told not to fear for the Lord, his God, shall fight for him. Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 20 it says and I besought the Lord at the time saying verse 24 O Lord God thou hast begun to show me thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand for what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might Verse 25, I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain and Lebanon. If you remember, Moses broke faith with Yah. Uh, Yah's commandment to him was to speak unto the rock, to give water to a thirsty Israel. But Moses struck the rock, changing what Yah has planned. Verse 26 says, But the Lord was wroth with me for your sake, and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, Let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. Verse 27 it says, Get thee up. Unto the, into the mount, uh, top of Pesah, and lift thine eyes up westward and northward and southward and eastward, and behold it with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. I would like to speak on pleading with the Lord. There is a Jewish study book called the Midrash, It mentions that Moses prayed 515 times. Now they get this number from the words, and I pleaded, because the Hebrew number's value sums up to 515. To come into the presence of the Lord, pleading with the Lord our God, shows a strong relationship with him. It teaches us to humble ourselves, to believe that Yah does hear our prayers, and He is faithful to forgive our sins, increasing our faith in the Lord our God. Pleading with Yah creates a oneness, a bond between God and man. Our Lord Jesus pleaded with the Father on his own behalf. When we look at Matthew 26, verse 36, our Lord and Savior pleaded with the Father to not drink that hard cup that was before him. Jesus pleaded knowing that he needed to die that we may live. He said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Our Lord fell on his face and prayed, O my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. 
The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. It's very important that we recognize that the Son of Man prayed three times before he was betrayed into the hands of sinner. We must be willing to wrestle in prayer with our Lord regardless of the outcome, willing to plead with our whole heart until our soul is at rest. In Acts 10, Peter made a powerful statement. He said, The truth I perceive that God is no respecter of person, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. We read that God denies Moses entry into the promised land. But Yah didn't fire Moses. Moses was promoted into something else because we see him again thousands of years later at the Mount of Transfiguration with Elijah and the two disciples. Chapter 4. Moses tells us how important it is to observe all that God has commanded in order to be blessed. In verse 2, it says, Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. This verse is also repeated in the New Testament. Now Moses predicts that in the future generation, the people will turn away from God. And he was right. But they repented and return to Torah. There is hope in the promises that God is going to return his people to the land and return the inheritance that was lost, remove the curse, and restore the blessing. In chapter 5, Moses tells us again about the covenant with Yah and the Ten Commandments. Also, we must accept those laws that, that we don't understand, that are beyond logic, but to trust and obey the Lord, to learn them and be careful to observe them. Chapter 6. This chapter gives us the Shema which declares the foundation of, the, of our faith and the unity in God. Do not forget the God of our salvation, who is a witness and a light. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivot Malkahuto Elohim Vayen Yeshua HaMashiach Hu Adonai Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Yahshua, the Messiah. He is Lord. In 
Psalms 119, starting with verse 10. It says, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Verse 12. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statue. Committing Yod's words in our heart will never cause us to be ashamed. Chapter 7. It reads that the Lord did not set his love upon Israel, nor chose Israel because they were more in numbers than any other people, for they were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loves Israel, all of Israel, that he made a covenant with Israel to be blessed forever. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. It says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, that keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to the thousand generations. Verse 10, and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hate him. He will repay him to his face. Verse 11, thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statues and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. Let's go to First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. It says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which wars against the soul. Verse 12. Having your conversation, meaning lifestyle, honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be the king as supreme, verse 14, or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Verse 15. For so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As we increase in understanding of Torah, we become more skillful in our profession as spiritual leaders. I want to encourage you to learn how to plead with our God like our Savior Jesus did and how Moses did to open up the areas in our hearts by the only way that it comes by pleading unto the Lord. The word is Vayet Can An, and I pleaded.